Hello and welcome to Architecture Design and Photography. Today we are speaking with Megan Brown Bennett. She is the CEO and co-owner of Light Years Ahead, a national boutique PR agency dedicated to helping businesses, especially small entrepreneurs, build their image, often from scratch. Give it up for Megan Brown Bennett. All right, so Megan Brown Brennan, welcome to Architecture Design and Photography. Uh, you are the CEO and co owner of Light Years Ahead, a national boutique PR agency dedicated to helping businesses, especially small entrepreneurs, build their image often from scratch. I am a small entrepreneur, and that's why I'm interested in getting some of your thoughts today on I'm going to process what you have to say through my own business. Yeah. Uh, or through my own experience and see if like, oh, some lights go off. That'd be great. So yeah, first question, hopefully I can uh, spark some, some lights for you. Some, some light or some lights and some change and some growth. Who knows? Right. So yeah, being a sole creative entrepreneur, uh, with, uh, one employee working with me and, uh, an assistant that I work with all the time whenever I'm shooting, but he's an independent contractor. So pretty small company. Yeah. How can I afford a PR agency? This is something that you kind of put in your bio that you could kind of explain around that. So I'm interested. I'm intrigued. Yeah. I mean, so I would say that some entrepreneurs have the budget to do it and some don't. And and we charge a monthly retainer and we, you know, we, we charge it up front. So every month the client pays us and we do our work um, and it's every month. We don't bill by the hour. Um, and so I recommend that if you do have a budget, this is the thing, if you're going to work with an agency, they're not going to take a retainer of a thousand dollars a month. If that's all that you have, then you should work with one independent contractor or one person that, that they're just like a one stop show because. So they're kind of an, an agency, in-house thing or well, like an independent for smaller entrepreneurs. Cause I would, I mean, our retainers, they start at like $3,500 a month. And so if that's something that you can't afford, what I recommend is there's two options. One option is to look for an independent contractor that does their own publicity for publicity for brands, but just is like a one person company. And those contractors tend to, to charge more like, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month because they're working on their own. But mm -hmm. they won't be as good as we are. The other option I have is, is that you could train yourself to do public relations if you mm -hmm. have the time and the capacity. But it is a lot of work. So, you yeah, know, there's... I, I, I know that because I don't do it because I'm so terrible at it. <laughs> it's, it's more a matter of personality. So to be a good publicist or to do, you know, to, to get publicity for your brand, you have to be dogged. You can't take no for an answer. You have to be creative. You have to come up with pitches every single week and you have to be able to get rejected all the time and laugh mm -hmm. it off because that's how I'm successful at my job. I, I get no's so many times a day or take me off, or why are you contacting me? Or And I just laugh it off, and then I contact somebody else. Or if somebody says no, then I try again a couple months later with a different angle. So it's more like you just have to not be, you can't take no for an answer when you're doing publicity, and you have to have a thick skin. And if you don't have those two qualities, then it's not the right it's not the right path, and you should outsource it because it, it, it takes a certain personality to get the job done. Right. Yeah, I what you're saying as far as being someone who's pushing the talents of a small company out there if you're mm -hmm. especially if you're a creative entrepreneur uh you're going to take it so incredibly personally that like here's here's a summation of my life through creativity that i hope that you will find valuable and then when people deny it, it it's a soul crushing thing but if you get someone with social presence, charisma, who values what you do and can see the value of what you do as a creative, who can go out there and be kind of like the tip of the spear that's sharp and durable when it comes to taking criticisms, criticism of the actual product. It doesn't affect them as much because they're not as emotionally involved with the creation. They're emotionally yes. involved in like, I want the ability to make this connection. And that connection they value, like, I see, I can't do what this creative person has done in this way or in the way that they're creative. I can take them and connect them with these people who need that. And you can be an incredible, like, cheerleader with an emotional durability that, yeah. that draws people to the work that the entrepreneurs do that you're trying to connect. That's how I would think the relationship is working. 
It is. And I don't, and I, I really don't take it personally. Yeah. If somebody says they don't like a product that I represent, of course I'm like, but wait, tell me why. And you know, X, Y, and Z, this is why you should consider it. But I don't take anything personally. You're right. The way that the owner would, because my job is to make everybody look good and to right. take the heat. So, right. <laughs> so how would I go about, um, for, for, let's say, a uh, uh, a business under five total employees. Mm -hmm. What what is it that a PR agency would help a business like that grow? Like, in what ways uh, would I consider engaging with a PR agency to help expand my business? Yeah, and I mean, I will say we've worked with entrepreneurs that's like you know one person and they have an assistant or something. It just depends on you know what the product is or what the service is and what you're trying to promote but the reason to get pr for a brand like yours is to get you interviews to get your name out there in the media as an expert in your field so that people will see you being mm. quoted in articles in national media and they're going to come to you and say wait a second i just saw that you were featured in popular mechanics as an expert on xyz I want to interview you for another story or it just, it gives you hmm. brand recognition so that people know who you are. We never guarantee that it's going to drive sales because publicity really is about building brand awareness and continuing to get your name out there with the media over and over again. So that after somebody sees a story four or five times, they're going to say, Oh, okay. I know that brand. I remember that brand. So what we could do for you is, is write compelling pitches, get your brand out there to the media and get your name out there and offer you for interviews doggedly until we get interviews for you that start. Mm. And it starts like a stream and a flow of consistent coverage. And that will help to build your name where people know who you are. And then they call you when they need your expertise. Uh, okay. So I'm starting to see the difference in the social net of how businesses work. So a marketing yeah. agency is selling your products a pr agency is developing the awareness of you within the public conversation more exactly so. so we're pitching you to the media you know to all the top tv shows to the producers to the top um, online digital websites to the uh. editors and saying hey this is a great story can you interview trent you know for xyz he's a, a perfect expert on this and then they'll say yes or no and if they say yes then we coordinate an interview and then you're featured and then, you know, we, we use that as leverage to then pitch you for other media. So mm. it just continues to give you credibility. And then we recommend the clients put their PR hits on their website. And it just, then it's, just, you know, as seen in. And then right. it gives you that credibility that when people want to hire, they, they know that you're legitimate, that you're not just some, you know, me too. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, hmm, interesting. It, in pushing a, so I would think the, the demographic that listens to this podcast would be photographers, architects, potentially graphic designers, things of that nature, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, do you, how does the media find interest in those types of companies? Where do you place? I mean, there has to say, be a hook. Hmm. You know, there has to be. We have to find the hook. We've worked with so many different experts. We've worked with it in a life insurance expert, a social uh, cybersecurity expert. Uh, we've worked with a rabbi. We've worked with this spiritual guiding person. You just have to find the story. What's going to interest people? It can't just uh, be, you know, oh, she specializes in life insurance. It's more this person is the top of her game and she's going to provide you tips on how to do this. And you want to offer things that most people don't know about. So you kind of want to like give something that's unique to you. Um, and we find that we find that when we talk to the brands and when we start building relationships with our clients, then we kind of have like an exploratory where we have a call and we figure out, okay, this is a great hook. This is a great hook. This is not going to work. You know, this is too standard. And then we just, every week we come up with new ideas and we get ideas based on the feedback that we receive from the media. Cause sometimes they'll say, why in the heck would I cover this? This is so last year, you know, this is, this has already been done. We're on to this. And then we'll say, okay, this is what they're working on now. Let's find an angle that we can pitch them with. So it's hmm. just constantly like spinning the wheel and, and, and figuring out new ways to reinvent a story and come up with new hooks to make it sound interesting. I mean, some of our clients is just one product that we've been pitching for years, the same product every single week. 
And you've got to come up with creative ideas to keep that right. top of mind. You can't keep saying the exact same features and benefits over and over again, because eventually they're going to block you. <laughs> uh, that's, that's interesting. So you, uh, your creativity is in finding the narrative that you believe will connect and your, your, yes. both your talent is in that creativity, but then your talent also is in the social interactions that transfer your knowledge and value of who you're representing. Yeah. So you're, and it's our both. relationships. Yeah. We have yeah. really good relationships with the media and people have asked me before, like, you know, could chat GP or could AI take over your job? And I'm like, no, because they don't have my personality, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah. And there's that's, definitely that's really a social. What helps me is my personality is what really helps me building these brands and working with the media because they know me, you know. Mm. And I'm not saying that in a narcissistic way. It's just that, you know, a robot can't steal your personality. They can be as nice as possible, but they're still not me, you know. Right. <laughs> sure. Uh, so let's see. Next one I have insights and actionable tips to use now, even if they can't afford to hire an outside PR company. Now, I was wondering from what you were saying, kind of a follow up. I've been considering this for like five years, but haven't pulled the trigger because I'm just a little too comfortable, probably. But um, I, I should probably hire a full time single PR person to potentially manage my social media take everything we do and keep trying to pitch it out there it, in when you hear someone with under five employees think that way, do you think, yeah, they're on the right road for a small company and then they'll realize if they grow, then they're going to need someone that's more of a, you know, a, a bigger firm yes. to operate PR or would you recommend a small company go right into working with an external agency? It depends on your budget. I mean, if you have enough budget to do like, three to six months of a PR campaign, I think it's worth it. Unless you go mm -hmm. with somebody that you know is really good, a one, you know, a one stop pony or whatever. <laughs> I would say, um, you know, if you have a budget to put aside for a couple of months, because it does take a few months to see the interviews come into fruition, then I would go that route. But if you have a smaller budget, then I would start with somebody smaller and try to get a few write-ups here and there. And then once you have that credibility and you start to, you know, drive more brand recognition and sales, then go with a bigger firm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and we're not a big firm. I mean, we're a boutique firm. We're very reasonable. The big firms are charging, you know, like ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month for oh, yeah. PR. And you know, we're small too. We're boutique. There's only five of us in our agency as well. So I think we're kind of on a par with yeah, your agency. The yeah, there's there's always a upside and a downside to any of that. Like if if a company just got way too big all of a sudden, then you'd have to scale up or they'd have to find someone new. But at the same time, if a small company is looking to have importance with a PR firm that they sign on, if that PR firm is huge and they're tiny, it's just not going to be a lot of value on the work. PR firm side. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we all of our clients feel like they're our only client because we give them so much TLC, you know? Um, but also we don't take on just any account. We have to, it has to have a hook. It has to have a story. And, um, you how know, hard is that to tell people they're just not interesting enough to push out into the public? <laughs> it's more like if they are unwilling to give us information about the product and they don't know anything about their brand. Like we've worked with a couple of beauty brands before where the founders don't even know what ingredients are in the product. You know, it's uh, like, you got to work with us. Um, and if they're not willing to divulge that information, then it's hard because we don't have a lot to work with. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. What's the process like that you go through to discover the narrative or story of the brand that you're working with that you then create an image from? So we have the client send us background information and we look into it and do some research. And then we have a call, a kickoff call. Once we start a new campaign and we talk for like an hour and just go through all the different questions with the clients. And then we come back with some extra questions and bullets to send them in order to craft like the perfect pitch and the perfect bio and everything. So it's just like a number of steps. And then even when we get the pitch developed, it's constantly being re-edited, reformatted, and you know, changed depending on topical things that are going on or different situations um, mm -hmm. in the news. So it really just right. depends, but it, it's, it's constantly being changed and it's fluid. It's not like a stagnant piece of, you know, uh, 
it's not like a stagnant pitch that we keep sending it over and over. It, it, it's right. always evolving. So that's the, that's the subjective judgment part of your work is to take the pulse of the public conversation at the time yeah. and see yeah. where your client's narrative could marry into that. And that's going to be a very subjective thing that's at the whim of your judgment where I'm interacting with a, a space through a photograph and I'm moving furniture around so they don't um, visually or graphically conflict. And that's just that extreme, like, nope, nudge this that way, nudge this that way, a little brighter, a little, you know, it's this yeah. weird subjective, like my opinion, and there's no right or wrong. Uh, that's yes. where the subjective nature of your work comes in, is that you're constantly in touch with the public conversation in general. And then you have to have a really strong awareness of your clients and see like, oh, we got to move it like this, and then it's going to fit really well, or we move it here and then it, that's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's always interesting for me to see where the the subjective judgment in the creativity and the value come in with work that is very different from what I do and outside of my talent range, we'll say. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So um, how how can brands build awareness in the current environment? So how do you sense what's going on currently and how could you compare that to what is going on currently? For the news that we've had over the last month, what would you pick out of that to say, all right, since this is going on, uh, this you know uh, makeup company over here or this uh, make-believe company over here would fit because? Yeah, I mean, we really try to look at the seasons and the topics. So like right now it's back to school. So we're pitching a lot of our brands for back to school roundups. But then the brands that you know are not applicable to that, we it's holiday gift guide right now. Um, a lot of the outlets are already taking submissions for holiday gift guides. So that's kind of what wow. we're working on. Um, you know, it, it, and then if there's like, like when COVID was around, we had a lot of clients that had to do with germs and, you know, germ management. So we took advantage of that. Um, so it really just depends. Or like we have Thanksgiving coming up and one of our clients is a national nonprofit that does turkey cuddling. So we would offer that to, Wait, you know, the Today turkey, Show, Good what? Morning America, turkey cuddling. <laughs> What's that? It's where you like hug a turkey and it like raises your endorphins and makes you feel wonderful. And it's, it's this, hey. this, um, we work for the sanctuary. We do the PR do, for them and they do barnyard therapy. Do they still eat the turkeys later? No, <laughs> it's a, okay. it's a, it's a vegan. <laughs> I mean, uh... they don't. <laughs> That would be kind of hard, church and state, that, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's a little different. Yeah, okay. Okay, I get it. All right. Um, boy, I had a good a good follow-up question, but the hilarity of thinking of hugging a turkey and then eating it um, washed my brain of that other question. Um, all right, so brands building awareness in the current environment. There was something around there that I had that was, I was mulling over, but it'll come back to me. Um, all right. Maximization of marketing dollars is the next bullet point here that, okay, I, I have numbers in my head that I could put towards marketing. What are some tips that you would have or ways of thinking about how to market uh, when with a, with a budget that you have to maximize? Okay. Well, I would say that obviously PR, well, to, obviously to me, PR is the biggest thing for your buck. You might spend, mm -hmm. you know, $3,500 a month and get five to 10 really solid media coverage placements. That's where an editor is endorsing you and you're not paying for it. Um, but if you have the budget, we also recommend that you do social media and advertising too, because the three of them synergistically will get you the best results. Most people don't have the money to do ad budgeting and we don't handle social media or advertising. We only do grassroots PR, but I would recommend that you do some social media advertising, um, and you know, just really focus on the social and the PR synergistically together, because mm -hmm. I think that that's going to get you the maximum coverage. Hmm. Now, why don't you guys do social as well? It's just not our focus. I've never focused on it. Um, PR is just we want it. We don't want to be all things to all people. We want to really have our niche, and our niche is public relations, and that's just what we're good at. There's mm -hmm. so many agencies where all they do is social media. And like, I would definitely recommend going with one of those um, rather than hiring a firm that does everything because I feel like it's hard to be all things to all people. 
And those people that say that they are, I just don't think you're going to get the right TLC that you would need um, for a small emerging brand. Okay. What, what are your thoughts on social media for uh, entrepreneurs and businesses that are growing these days? Because it seems like social media started out as here's an authentic person to person thing, but now we're turning it into essentially a thing outsourced to, to other creative individuals that then naturally strip it of the authenticity if, if the creator or entrepreneur or whatever had done it solely themselves. So it's, I mean, I would say that, that an entrepreneur that really does it themselves is going to probably have the best coverage. Well, depending on who they are, because some people are just super narcissistic and they think that if they just keep showing videos of themselves, it's going to do something. Um, you know, I've seen both. Like I've seen some really, really well-known famous celebrity dermatologists that do their own PR and they do the best job because I'm sure that they have a team behind them, but they record their own content. Um, so I think it's important if you are an expert Mm -hmm. to do your content. And then if you have somebody that can help you, that's really an expert, then they can help you execute the posting. Um, but you know, most entrepreneurs are not that savvy to do it completely on their own. So I think Mm -hmm. it is important if you can find somebody to help you if you don't have the time, but I do think it's important to also just get contribute your own stuff right, and not right. just have somebody else do it because they don't, they don't know your business the way that you do. Right. That's a, that's a really good tip that I've, I've had a real issue with posting on social media. I don't like it because I feel yeah. like it's a forced creative act, which yeah, for someone who's creative, I think it, it has to be something that you naturally um, are drawn into. And then through that, it it's uh authentic but if you're constantly thinking i have to do this that's not that's not how creativity works especially if you're pulling it from yourself it, if you're doing it in that manner that's like working for a client but your client is yourself and so you've created a a, a circular kind of black hole that for a creative yeah. just doesn't go well yeah, like- but pulling content just to have content. Like, oh my gosh, I have yeah. to post something today. What am I gonna do? I've got to come up with something. And right. that's the other reason I'm just not interested in working in that field because it's just, it's so subjective too. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that that's I mean, where we, I when, think your when we've, tip. Yeah, we've done it in the past and like, we did it for a couple of years back in like five or six years ago. And I remember that you might think a post is good, but if the client looks at it and they're like, I don't, I think this sounds way better or, you know, it's like, it's very subjective. It really right. is. Right. Yeah. But your tip of saying like, all right, have the actual creative or entrepreneurial just film this stuff on their own. That yeah. is like, you're telling them like from, if I was coming from a PR perspective, I would tell architectural photographer when you see something that's interesting or that you don't know about or that you're curious about or that you do know about that other people don't know about just just record it and and send it to me i'll take care of the rest that to me then is me being self-aware and present when i'm doing things and sharing it just with a friend essentially yeah and then the friend does the tagging the keywording the caption the posting that there's something there in that translation that for a creative person often is is um caustic in, in yeah the because practice. it takes some of the pressure off of you too it's just you get to be authentic and then let somebody else deal with the execution yeah yeah there's something there that that works better in that way i'm gonna have to pack that one away and maybe try and start using it so thank you for try that. it sure. <laughs> okay next question um oh and i remembered my question i had before how did you realize that you had this talent of um, keeping a pulse on what was going on publicly and then how to understand narrative and social connectivity to then be that bridge between your clients and the public? That's, a, that's a, just a natural talent, I would imagine, that you some, at some point became aware that I have value here and now I'm going to start a business around it. How did you come to that realization? I think I came to the realization I've been doing this since I was 22 and my first job was with this agency with the former owner Mm. and within like a couple of weeks I mean back then I was smiling and dialing I was like printing out all the contacts of the media getting on the phone and calling everybody and getting hung up on multiple times a day why are you calling me 
I'm pitching this great whitening toothpaste. Don't ever contact me again, click, you know. But then there was a few that would be like, this is a great idea, send it to me and we'll feature it in next month's issue of Shape or People Magazine. Or, and I started to get a lot of yeses just from my conversation. And that's when I gained the confidence and realized like I know how to sell this stuff because I believe in it. And as, as, as long as you can believe in what you're representing, then you can sell it. If you don't believe in the products, forget it. It's not going to happen. Um, mm. I just realized that I had a gift for the conversation. And that is really my strength is conversing with people. Thanks. I feel like even in my life with my kids and my family, it's the same thing. I'm constantly like doing crisis management or, you know, convincing people, oh, this is a great product. you got to try it. I love it just because I love it. You know, even personal stuff, I'm constantly being a publicist without even realizing it. Like sometimes I'll be walking mm. around at a grocery store and oh, this is the best product I've ever tried, <laughs> you know? Uh, have you ever tried this? And then I'll be talking to somebody, you know, at the checkout stand and then uh, somebody else hears me and goes and buys it because I, I'm pitching it, even though I don't even represent it. It's just, it's like a passion that's within me that is contagious. Right, right. No, I can, I can feel that. I can feel like if I, anything that I really um, have found and value in the process of how I go about my day or anything else like that, that's like really integral that is a great creation that makes my life easier or better in some way you it's just you can't stop talking about it you just blah 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 yeah. you know so have you yeah. ever had a client or a product you've had to represent that you didn't believe in that and there was there a struggle in there or did you just simply say nope not gonna do it um we did represent this digestive pill this was several years ago that was um supposed to help you be regular Mm -hmm. And uh, it literally backfired and everybody got super <laughs> sick from it. So yeah, that was a tough one. And we had to end it and say, I'm sorry, but we're just getting too much negativity. We don't think it's a good time to promote this product because everybody was having, you know, sometimes you just have to throw in the towel and say, you know what? I think your money would be spent best elsewhere doing advertising or something like that. Because or if PR is not working, product. it's not oh. working. Or some brands will work on and all they want is sales. That's all they care about is driving sales. And we're like, listen, mm. we just got you an in style and people magazine. We're sorry that it didn't drive sales, but we can only get you the brand awareness. We can only do so much, you right. know? So sometimes right. you have to throw in the towel if, if they're not happy with just getting brand awareness. Sometimes sales happen. It just depends on what the product is and who's watching. That must be a, hard sales pitch for your services to have to tell someone this is not directly related to sales we are working for your uh um social and brand mental building. building not not direct sales that's for a marketing advertising agency we are we're growing your consciousness within the public so that yes. you, you've got to work on your marketing we are going to work on your reputation being wider broader, uh, more encompassing or saturating the public conversation. Yeah. And we try to be very straightforward about that from the beginning and just say, listen, if you're looking for ROI, because sometimes they'll say, well, what can you do? What placements can you get us? And we're like, we don't guarantee anything. We don't know until we try, you know, but some agencies will say we guarantee this, 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 and this, and maybe they're paying editors under the table or something. I don't know, mm. but um, that's not you know, how we work. And we're very straightforward about that. But still, sometimes once in a while, the clients will still say, well, we need sales. And we say, you know what? I'm sorry, but that's not what we're here for. Of course, that's an added benefit. We have one client that always gets sales from PR, but, but a lot of them don't. They just get brand recognition, which mm. is what we're here for. So can you talk more about the client that does get sales from uh, just PR, I'd be interested in why it works for that client. And I'm, I'm like making guesses a, about the product. It's a veteran founded Wagyu beef company. And um, I think that the angle that it's veteran only, um, they only employ veterans and it's this really high end Japanese Wagyu beef that tastes incredible. They were voted best hot dogs from food and wine from a pitch that we sent out and samples and they made like a, a quarter of a million dollars in sales. But that does mm -hmm. not always happen. Mm -hmm. And we try to like humble the clients and say that does not always happen, but it can. And I feel like with food, it's easier for some reason to drive sales because hmm. it's like a consumable. I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a much quicker buy, lower price point, and they have a story that is immediately experience touching through our employees, our veterans. So that that uh, yeah. I would imagine that drives purchasing decisions. Yeah. Uh, okay, last question I have lined up here for you to knock out of the park. <laughs> uh, how do you turn failure into success? I'm good at this one uh, as far as the first part of the question. I would say that <laughs> Uh, failure is what helps to drive success. So like every single time that I get a no or um, something doesn't work out, it drives me to want to make it work. You know mm. what I'm saying? So like I might get a client and, and it's a difficult one and I think it's a great story and I'm pitching it and I'm just not getting any hooks, you know? That mm. actually drives me even more to get it. So then I go and I look at different options and I say, all right, well, maybe let's try this type of media, or maybe we need a different angle. It just motivates me even more mm. um, to push harder and try to find that loop. So I right. take failure as a, I do take it as a way, a major way to help me drive success. Like it, it pushes me to work harder and to say, you know what? I'm not going to take no for an answer. Too bad that these people don't like it. I'm going to go after another media outlet that's just as big that will cover it, you know? So I just kind of like take it, let it roll off my back and keep going. Right. Uh, what were some of the surprise successes that you didn't really expect? You, you, Because I've had this in creation of art that I didn't realize the uh, response that was going to happen until after it happened. And then I could outline why it happened. But beforehand, I had yeah. no clue it was going to happen. I would say um, working with, we've worked with a couple of nonprofits, um, and one of them, it was just starting out and it was a, um, an equine experience for veterans, um, combat veterans it's called War Horses for Veterans. And um, when we started with them, they'd had no publicity. Um, it's actually my family's foundation. So I had a personal stake in it and uh, started pitching it to the media. This was back in 2017. And we got them on the Today Show where they brought these oh, wow. Vietnam vets that hadn't seen each other in years on the Today Show for this segment that ended up being eight minutes long. And we had no idea what was gonna happen from it. But after this segment, they got, I think like $150,000 in donations. And to me, wow. that was the most surprising just because I'd never done a nonprofit before. You know, we're, all, we're always seeing direct sales where people are making money. And this was just so much more rewarding and surprising that it showed me that um, the nonprofits and those organizations that have a really good cause and no hidden agenda, those are the ones that can be mm. really successful in the media. And it's just very exciting to see donations come in from a media hit where right. you're just basically telling your story on TV and people find it so compelling that they want to help out. Right. Now, are there uh, certain kind of pillars or things that you see in the current media cycle or current culture that you use as like, all right, this is going on. So we should put pitch these aspects of businesses that we're representing. Yeah. Yes. And, and I would say that um, it happens a lot and we kind of go with the trends. Like right now, a lot of the websites, the big ones um, in order for them to cover you, you have to be an affiliate if you have a product. So you have to be mm -hmm. on something called like share a or skim link, which is, I don't know if you've heard of that, but, a lot of the sites are doing it now. So we recommend to our clients that they become part of affiliate programs so that they get more coverage. And it basically incentivizes like BuzzFeed to cover you in a story because mm. if they cover you and they're affiliated with share a sale with your link, then if somebody buys the product, they'll get whatever, 10% of the sale uh, of the commission. So that right. incentivizes things like that. Or, um, you know, uh, women's health month comes up or you know we we definitely go with what's topical and sort of take that and and run so i don't know if that answered your question or not but yeah no it it uh it, it's uh yeah it, might have money ADHD money a little bit <laughs> <laughs> no no i it it's just that yeah it's it's intrinsic to doing business that the you know if there's profit in them for profit in it for them, they will be more likely to. 
Yeah, so, uh, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's that's become like the norm of the media now. And a lot of them are trying to charge. I've noticed that Forbes now, there's like 3,000 editors and they're all saying, some of them, I had somebody reach out the other day saying, you know, if you want a full story in Forbes, I can do it for $500, you know, which is pretty unethical because yeah. that's pay for play. Um, there are different trends that I, I definitely, you know, go with and then I'll recommend to clients they do one thing or another because of it. So. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'll have to work on some affiliate program, uh, stuff, I guess as well. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, these are all really good, um, kind of first step thought points for me that I'm going to have good. to kind of digest and start to, I, I think I would imagine my best step forward currently would be for one, the tip that you're saying to have the creative essentially do the capture and then pass it off yeah. to someone, not people essentially coming up to you and saying, all right, we need you to do this, do that, do this. Right. And then we're going to go post it. It loses some authenticity and uh, it's, it's um, disengaging. It does. Like if you're in the car and a thought comes up, record yourself, send it, you know? Right. Think of those random things because that's what's going to interest people, not the planned mm. stuff. Right, right. The the somewhat epiphanies. <laughs> yes. All right. And then I got to, I have to start thinking of how the current public uh, conversation, how the things that I'm doing, uh, services I'm offering, or even the thoughts I'm having fit in with the current public conversation as a means of getting my voice out there to a degree. Yes. If I'm thinking through social media, but also I probably need to start making pitches to local publications and then more national publications with yes, any kind of- Yes, it's good to start local for sure, just to get that credibility and you'll have a better, it's a lower hanging fruit, so you'll have a better yeah. chance with that. All right. Yeah. Got to work up the ladder to a degree, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's rare that you skyrocket to the top of everything, so. I know, it sure is. <laughs> Well, uh, Megan, it's been really uh, interesting talking to you, and I've I've been able to um, expand my business mind a bit, a bit beyond where my uh, lack of interest in being social <laughs> would have me go. So I I have a tall order in front of me to some degree. So Good. hopefully I can make it past the few steps where I have to do myself and get to a point where I could hire someone with uh, the talent that that you display to, uh, to be my, um, training wheels and dad kind of pushing me on the bike and letting me go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. It's been really beneficial to talk to you. Uh, where can people reach out to you and where can they find your website and all the other things? Yeah, they can go to our website. It's lightyearsahead.com. Um, and you can reach out to me, um, Megan at lightyearsahead.com, M-E-G-A-N at lightyearsahead.com. And I will happily respond anytime. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time and, uh, give Megan a shout. If you're looking for these kind of services in your entrepreneurial business, creative, small, big, larger, medium, whatever, she's got talent. We're here when you need us.